Channeling my inner geek, I ventured to the Michigan State University Hackathon. A hackathon is a place where coders, developers, and designers get together to build cool digital stuff. The three-day event is hosted this year at the Temple Club in Old Town in Lansing, the current home of the Lansing Makers Network. Makers make. So they have assembled a wide variety of new and old tools ranging from 3D printers to their traditional wood and metal shops. Board member Nick Kwiatkowski gave me a brief tour. So very, very similar to like a, a 3D printer. Uh, we have it's two axes, so we've got two motors that drive the X and the Y, and then we have a laser that's in the back that shoots a uh, laser beam across a couple of mirrors, and then it shoots down there and creates kind of like a hot spot, and it just kind of burns through. So right now it's actually etching, um, like the Rough Sparty uh, logo there, but uh, it can actually cut through up to about a quarter inch of plywood. Would be how we have it set up right now. Um, it can also do acrylics as well, up to about an inch and a half. The Lansing Makers Network has been around for about two years now, and we've uh, had this space since the uh, middle of last year. Um, the space is always open to all of our members, so if you become a member of the Lansing Makers Network, you actually get to key the building, and you can work on your own projects whenever you want. We have a lot of other really cool tools that a lot of maker spaces don't have, so our members tend to gravitate to those as opposed to using the 3D printer for a lot of stuff. When you do 3D printing, you have to know AutoCAD, you have to be able to design stuff, engineer stuff, and you know, in all honesty, the, the class of 3D printers that exist today are not a high quality yet where they run very reliably. Things we have 3D printed like this guy right here. This is a, you know, show kids an example of what a transmission from a car like, um, works. So you've got this middle thing right here, and it spins this a lot faster. And this is all done from a uh, 3D printer. So you can see right here, the only thing that's, you know, that we put together on here is, you know, the screws. But um, this one here is known as a resin printer. So you actually have a vat of, I'll call it goo. It's a, it's a particular type of polymer. Um, fill it up with there, and there's a laser that goes in the bottom. And as the laser touches that polymer, it hardens. So what you end up getting is a piece of, you know, your design actually coming out of this vat of goo, like totally like Terminator, you know. But this one here is very slow, but it's extremely accurate. You see this piece right here. You can look inside there. I don't know if you can, but it's actually got a staircase inside there. And you look inside, it's actually got little photos on the wall. So it's fifty dollars for I think a, a big tub of that goo. You know, and so that piece right there probably cost five, ten bucks. This is our electronics area over here. Um, so we have a full set of like soldering irons and testing equipment. And Hi. What are you making? Uh, 3D oh, you are? Ah. But theirs is not just a 3D printer, it also, yours is uh, to do braille, right? Yeah. Oh, fantastic. So people will be able to input their ideas using braille? Yeah. Oh, that's going to be great. Yeah. We're doing this project for the resource center for persons with disabilities, so at the MSU. Sewing machine that's an embroiderer, plus two other standard sewing machines that people use on a regular basis. So, you know, again, you can do your own designs and all that stuff on these here. Think of like a bumper sticker, like that, that uh, like the plasticky vinyl, um, plasticky uh, bumper sticker feel. We're education focused, we're education based, that's where our 501c3 is really about. Um, we really like to do a lot of that education stuff, you know, like the, the skilled trades and all that stuff that. I mean, electronics isn't that hard, but you know, a lot of people just don't have access to it. So we want to give people access to that stuff. So this is our uh, wood shop here at the Lansing Makers Network. Um, we have all sorts of tools, you know, all over the place. You can see that. Um, but we have things from like you know, band saws to um, to routers to table saws, you know, chop saws. Um, you know, pretty much anything a woodworker would ever want. You know, we've got pretty much right here. You know, and this is really where you know our maker space really started. Um, we all came together and said, you know, we're sick and tired of buying all these tools over and over again. Tools. Why don't we all pull our our money together, buy this stuff together, and then we can all use it? So think of it almost like a gym membership. Uh, we've got lathes. Um, we've got a metric lathe and a imperial lathe. We have you know angle grinders. We have. Know, pretty much everything. Unfortunately, I don't know how to use most of the stuff without cutting off my fingers, so I don't use most of it, but um, we do have like the, uh, the book cutter and binder over there as well. This thing here is CNC controlled, so essentially we've got a drill on here that goes around and it can mill 
you know, in all the different axes. You know, you feed it, this one here is a little more complicated to use, it requires that you do some, some work in AutoCAD and things like that to make your designs, but when you come, you know, when, you, when you're done, like something like this right here would have taken a few minutes as opposed to using a tool by yourself, you know, taking a few hours and all that. So we have, we've had some people that made very intricate like wooden signs, like, you know, with their family name on it and things like mm -hmm. that and just, you know, unfortunately it's not one of our more used tools because it is, it's not as approachable as, you know, like the laser cutter where you just feed it a PDF file and away it goes. We've done, uh, we've hosted some events that are women only, um, so STEM events that are women only, uh, Girl Geeks uh, lunches met here a few times, things like that, so. We try to make sure that we're on top of that. I mean, getting people interested is always, you know, that's that's always the hardest part. It is, it, it's a it's a field that you know a lot of women just don't see themselves in, so it's hard to encourage people to even look at it. But uh, you know, we do everything in our power to make sure that we're you know we're equal across the board.